Hey guys, welcome back. So today I'm gonna test out this new thing. Um, so this is basically a counter pressure can filler. I'd never heard of one of these. Um, Great Fermentation makes this. It's a part of their tap cooler counter pressure system. So you can basically do bottles with the same setup. Uh, you just remove a part that we're gonna use specifically meant for cans. Um, but I'll show you guys that in another video. Um, so the idea of this is by doing counter pressure, you're reducing foam. Uh, it's also a good way to reduce CO2 in your cans because you basically purge CO2 from your can and then fill it up um, with pressure so that there's no oxygen getting in it. Basically, it can only release pressure. It can't get any more. So it's CO2, beer from filling from the bottom, and then it's just pushing out the CO2. And then in the end, you throw your lid on and can it. So I'll show you guys how to do all of that and how to put it together because that's always the hard part. Okay, so I've got my instructions here and these instructions have pictures. They never do. Seriously, I can't tell you how many times I've done a video, try to put some equipment together. There's no pictures. I have to go look up a YouTube video to figure out how to put together the things that I'm YouTubing about and whatever anyway. <laughs> okay, so let's get into it. Okay, so this is the tap cooler. This is the one that you can basically uh, fill your bottles with. So this little silicone thing is what goes on your bottle. We're gonna just remove that. And this is what fills it. So this is your release valve. This is where your CO2 goes in and this is where your beer goes in. All right. Oh, and this is the button that makes your CO2 go into your can. I got a gas valve CO2 situation so that I didn't have to run a line straight to it. So that just hooks right into here. All right. The fittings they use are actually really fascinating on these. They're unlike anything I've seen. Like there's a lot of notches happening, which I'm a big fan of. It seems like everything goes together really well. So this is just gonna get, this is my CO2 line that I always have just for canning and bottling and whatever. Um, it's just gonna get this. Voila! Easy, fits well. Okay, so that part is done. You can also, it comes with like a barb as well. You can just use a line if you so choose. I hate having to cut lines constantly, so I always opt for a fitting. Okay, so I'm basically just putting together the counter pressure filler first, and then we'll get into the canner part. Okay, so this is what we're gonna run our liquid through. So this is gonna hook onto a ball valve, which I can do right now. I'm just gonna sanitize this because you know, when you can beer, it's like kind of more important to sanitize everything even more so than if you keg it, cause it's just gonna last longer. And you don't wanna give a friend an exploding can, cause you will not hear the end of it. Okay, so, you know, what you do for everything. There it is. And so this little connection is for a Perlick uh, tap system. You have to use a, like you can hook this directly into your tap, but for the canning situation, you really can't. You would need a hose extender to do so, um, which I can do that here, there, but I need an intertap connection because I have inner tap faucets. So this is Perlick connection. I'm just gonna go ahead and unscrew this and remove it. And I'm gonna put on this valve. It's basically gonna control the flow of my beer. So I'm gonna can straight from the keg. All right, so that seems good. Okay, so this basically is what's gonna fill. Cool beans. Okay, now we can get into the instructions and stuff. So basically, um, I'm gonna run some 
sanitizer through all these connections, obviously, before we start canning. But until then, we're just gonna wait. Instructions. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is pull out our stuff. So, I actually forced this together earlier. You're not supposed to put this on first. So don't do that. That was just me screwing around when I opened the box. Okay, so our little, our fatter of the discs, it gets one of these guys, little pad. Wipe this off so it sticks. Oh God, I put it on a little crooked. My OCD is gonna kill me. Okay, whatever, it's good, it's good. Sarah, don't freak out, be okay. All right, just hand screwing the rod in. And then we're gonna add the second metal disc. So then our wing nut just goes on it. This is what holds it to your table. So it goes upside down. So I'm going to do that right now. Oh God, my table's, my table might be too thick. This is a really beefy table for no reason. Who oh no. knew? All right. Okay, since my uh, table is too thick, what I'm going to do is put it on this block of wood and then connect this block of wood to my table. Do you guys have speed clamps just in your brewery? Is this a thing that people do? I have random chunks of wood and random clips everywhere for such occasions as this. All right, that's not going anywhere. Okay, so again, attaching this and just tightening the wing clamp, wing nut clamp. We're gonna look like a hardware store by the end of this. So now we get to put the other speed clamp on. This is speed clamp city. Alrighty, so we just are gonna stick this guy in here. They say to lube this, you can use cooking oil. I'm gonna go get like a little bit of coconut oil and do it. I would use keg lube, but I'm kind of blocked from everything right now. Okay, we're all lubed up. Okay, so we're gonna do it so flat sides facing towards you. It's gonna live over this metal plate because it's what's gonna hold the can on. So just gonna slide this in and it's gonna be an asshole. I don't know if I recommend doing this. This steel. Jenny probably thinks I'm murdering someone up here. All right, so it's lined up. We're gonna insert this screw to hold it in place. Alrighty, it is in place. Okay, so next step is I'm gonna sanitize this guy. I'm also gonna sanitize this lid just first kicks. Um, so the tap cooler is going to go straight through the hole in the lid. Makes a nice seal. And then it feeds on to the speed clamp. Okay, so that, that's actually it, really. It's pretty easy. Okay, now we can uh, attempt to fill our first can with this thing. I don't know why this table is so thick. It's like really obnoxious. It's thwarted me many times. Now I'm nervous. Okay, so I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna unscrew this and just, A, I'm gonna dip this in my tub of sanitizer down here and I'm gonna run. Ah, needs to be open, obviously. Duh, Sarah. So I'm gonna just run sanitizer through this whole line. I don't know where this thing's been. Okay, so that's sanitized inside. Got my sanitized ball lock fitting. And I'm just gonna go ahead and connect it right to my Imperial Red. And I'm gonna make sure my valve is off. Actually, I'm gonna just fill 
the line. There we go. Okay. I'm gonna sanitize this and try not to make a mess. Sanitize the O-ring situation. We already did that once, but you know, better safe than sorry. And this is just star sand. So what we're gonna wanna do is basically have this filler go all the way to the bottom of the can, which I'm using 16 ounce can, so it's gonna need it. I'm gonna turn my CO2 on. I'm just gonna leave it at serving pressure, which is, I usually put it less than 10, like eight or nine. So that's what's going on there. I'm gonna connect this. So, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it is releasing CO2. I'm stalling because I'm nervous. I'm gonna plug my canner in too while we're here. All right, everything's sanitized. Let's do it. Okay. So the idea is beer goes through here, so does CO2. CO2 goes first, then we fill with beer, and then we have beer. <laughs> All right. So you gotta put a decent amount of pressure on this, but like you don't wanna explode your can, you know? All right. So I don't know if you guys could hear that, but you can kind of hear when the CO2 fills. Um, I can also show you that it's in because it'll explode when I release the pressure. If you can get close to my microphone. Anyway, okay. Refilling it with CO2. And now, turn the valve, beer's going in. I can't tell. Of course I've got stupid glasses on. All right, so I'm gonna r remove some of the pressure very slowly. And you can totally like dial in exactly how fast you want it. Of course, I this is the first time I'm using this, so I have no idea exactly what the best option is. All right, I'm starting, starting to be able to see the beer. And I definitely let too much in. All right, I can see it. Probably because I made a bunch of foam. Okay, so once you get foam to the top, you get foam out of the release valve, obviously. Okay, so I'm gonna turn off my valve. I'm going to, <laughs> I'm a little nervous. Honestly, I'm gonna just top her off. Of course that made a lot of foam. So you want a can on foam typically to just make sure there's no CO2 happening. Um, if you guys think that's a lot of foam coming off, I usually have to fill these over my, um, my drip tray with my beer gun because like they foam a ton, that's like nothing. All right, putting on my glasses again. Get out of my way, sanitizer. There's our first one. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just try to show you guys it faster. I think I kind of got the hang of it now. We'll see. So, if your CO2 doesn't sound like it's like, stopping pushing CO2 in it, it's not sealed all the way. So you gotta address that and tighten it a little more. Man, there's no foam in that. That's crazy. There's like a remarkable little amount of foam in there. So much so that I'm gonna open it up more. I usually run my, uh, my beer gun at like three. This I'm now running at 10, which is kind of interesting. I'm gonna dial it back a little bit. We made some foam. All right. You know 
know what? Just realized something. I think I'm filling my cans too much. Every time someone tries to drink one of them, it explodes on them. And now I have a feeling that that is my fault. Who else's fault would it be, really? So I think one of the reasons I like this is because, like say for the beer gun, you kind of have to find somewhere to put it in between filling. So like each can, you gotta put it somewhere. And I honestly feel like I may be getting some um, because of that and because it's like, just generally got more stuff around, it's larger, whatever. I think I've been getting some like vaguely infected cans which you never want. Um, but I like this because like, it's not touching any surfaces when you release it, you know? And that's always been a problem that I've had with that system. And it's hand-free, which is kind of nice. The foam on these is really nice too. It's like, Looks delicious. I don't know why I'm doing this, but this can is really dinged up and I wanted to see how much pressure I could put on without breaking it and it seems to work. Thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe. I've got a link to the equipment below if you want to check it out for yourself. Also, like you can just get a bottle filler. I'm going to show you guys all about that situation and how to fill bottles from carbonated kegs in another video but I'll link to that once it's done. I've got a Patreon going. You can get ad-free videos, early videos, merch, monthly happy hour, and apparently bonus content because I just keep accidentally doing that. So I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my newest channel member, Paula La Roca, and my newest patron, Al Bro. Thanks so much for your support. I really appreciate it. This is just gonna get this Cool. Ah. Take two. Okay. This is gross. I put this in wrong. <laughs> I'm such an idiot.